So, welcome to God's Anointed Hand Sunday School lesson for this week. Um, the lesson is called Faith of an Anointer. Our devotional reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 16. Our background scripture is Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. And the printed passage, and what we'll be reading tonight is Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 39, and then it skips down to 44 through 50. Um, anybody want to pray us in? Okay. I thought I heard somebody else. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I come to you thanking you to allow us to meet back again here on land. Lord, praying that the word that comes over tonight will be a blessing to each of us on land and anybody else under the sound of our voice. Amen, amen. Lord, let just strengthen us and lead us and guide us through the, through the night that no harm or danger will come upon us with this storm coming up on us. Lord, just continue to keep your arms around us and let us and keep your mercy and grace upon us. Lord, these things I'm asking in your name's sake. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. As stated, the title of the lesson this week is Faith of an Anointer. Uh, devotional reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, 1 through 16. The background scripture is Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. And the printed passage and what we will read and break down and hopefully enjoy this evening is Luke chapter 7, 36 through 39, and then all the way down to 44 through 50. Uh, would anybody like to read? Uh, so we'll read from 36 through what? 36 through 39, and then go down to 44 through 50. Okay, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet and anoint them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees when he had hit and bitten him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would he would have if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner a woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Okay, forty four. Mm hmm. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seek thou this woman, I entered into thy house. Thou hast given me no water for my feet, but she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head was all thou doest not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with honor. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Um, okay. Is it down to 50? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And he said unto her, Thou art, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at me with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that's forgiven? Sins also, and he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Uh oh. So here we go. And of course, you know, we got a Pharisee involved in this. And it starts off in verse 37 and 36. It says, When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now, the Pharisee in question for this invite was Simon, and that, in my mind and your mind, this should be somewhat suspicious because of how the Pharisees thought, and in all actuality, 
He was probably posing a test for Jesus or to look at how Jesus would interact in a certain situation. Um, because remember, they thought they were more blessed than others. That God saw better in them than others. So Jesus is invited to this dinner and Jesus goes. He says, I'm going to go. <laughs> he went to the Pharisee's house and he got to the table and he started preparing himself for the meal. So in, in verse 37, it says, A woman in town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. It says a woman in sin wanted to see Jesus. And understand that she must have been known for her sin. I, I, I don't know why we circumspect or think that this woman was a prostitute. Um, I know a lot of people say that, but nowhere in this message does it say that this lady was of that ilk. It just says that she lived a sinful life and it was expressed. So it must have been known or, and it does show you that she was known for this life. So she knew where she wanted to go. She said, it says a woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. She knew where she wanted to go. She wanted to see him. She knew where he was at. She knew what she wanted to do. And she took an expensive jar of perfume. It doesn't say what she took it for. All we know is that she took this with her. It never states what the jar of perfume is for at this time, but it does state that she took it with her to the house. So understand, it had a purpose for her. It had a purpose for her. Maybe a gift or not, but she had a purpose for taking it. So in 38 it says, as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. As she stood at his feet, and, and this means that if, if you're unfamiliar with the Jewish custom, that she was behind him, as it says, and that's where she started looking at his feet to work on him. Jesus' feet were facing outward behind him, like almost like he was kneeling, and as was customary when eating. So this is a tradition that the Jews do. And this is what makes it even worse for Simon if you pay attention, because Simon didn't do what she's doing. And as she stood behind him, she began to weep, and she wept so hard that the tears began to wet his feet. Now, it was customary to wash your feet before meals, but with water. And this woman that was weeping had enough in her tears to wash his feet. And, and then she took her hair, which is on her, and it puts her in a position at the foot of Jesus or truly bowed down because in order for her hair to reach Jesus she had to be down so she was bowed down which truly places her in a humbling position in a service oriented minded position she is not standing over she has bowed down below him just so she could touch his feet with her hair. And she wipes his feet with her hair. She was humbled in the presence of Jesus. This woman had a purpose and intention. If you look at James, anybody want to pull up James 4, 10 through 12?
James chapter 4, 10 through 12. Okay, humble yourself. Oh, yep, you you there. Humble yourselves. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil his brother and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if the, if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy, who art thou that judges another. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue their year and buy and sell and get a gain. For as ye know not, we shall be on the morrow, tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that a for a little time and then vanishes away. Tammy, would you read up the 13th? <laughs> uh, that's all right. You read a little extra, but that's okay. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> see, see, if, you, if you're looking at 10, 11, and 12, you'll see there there is more to this woman than what's at the eye because the passage does not say what sin or sins that she had done but it does emphasize that she had a sinful life. So it speaks to even more than just a sinner. It, it speaks to more. She was known for her sins. And in the presence of the Lord, this sinful life woman knew who she was in the presence of and humbled herself to wash Jesus' feet. But remember, in this James part, somebody's going to be judging her. We already said she had a sinful life, but don't we all have a sinful life until we go to Christ? So the woman knew Jesus and she washed his feet. She showed a true strength here because she came to the one that knew her life. Christ knew who she was. He, she came to the one that knew why she was weeping and she humbled herself in his presence and I know that she knew that he was worthy of what she was doing and more or why would she have done it? She didn't go up to the owner of the house and do it. She didn't go do it to the other guest. She did it to the one that she knew knew her. Someone else had to see this and I bet you that their reaction was not going to be the same. But she was in a teaching moment for others. We, we don't pay attention to this, but she's in a teaching moment because even as the world sees her, she knows to go to Jesus. And they were going to miss the teaching. They were going to miss this teaching because of who we are. So in 39 it says, When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. That she is a sinner. Okay, here comes James 4, 10 through 12 on full display. The, the Pharisee who saw this happened. When he saw it happen, he judged the woman. And not only did he judge the woman, he judged Christ too. He said by saying if this man were a prophet, That starts him down the slope of judging Christ. And not only is he judging Christ, but he's judging his abilities and his authority. The Pharisee was correct when he said that a prophet would know 
what type of woman she was. And if Jesus was reading minds and hearts, and, and we know Jesus could read minds and hearts. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to turn to Mark 2, 8 through 11? Mark, Mark chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Mark 2, chapter... Mark 2, 8, reads... 8 through 11, yep. And, and immediately when Jesus received in his spirit, that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why read ye these things in your heart? What do ye that you say to the sick of the party? That says, be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sin. Uh oh. He said to the sick of the body, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Uh oh. So, so if Jesus could read their minds and hearts, then why couldn't he do the same here? Jesus knew who the woman was in her sinful life. And don't forget that he told the woman at the well about herself. So he knew who she was. The, the fact of the matter is that everyone and anyone that came up to Jesus, that calls on Jesus now, that wants to be with Jesus, is a sinner. Jesus knows that because that's what he came back to save us from. So isn't that why he came to help us sinners get right? This woman was what we all are. And although her life was known to the public, could you truly imagine what we would be labeled if our private life was known to the public, our private thoughts? See, Jesus knows your public and your private. And if you just seek him as she did, things will happen. And understand she was seeking him with a purpose. So he makes a statement to make Jesus less. Because the Pharisee knows of this woman. And in all actuality he has no use for her in her ways. She is beneath him in his mind. And Jesus should feel the same way. But... Be thankful that his mind is not like our minds. The Pharisee says in his mind that she is a sinner, but John 3.16 does not say that Jesus came to save specific sinners. It states that out of God's love, he sent his son into the world to be an offering to the world. There was no specific sin because all sin was sin. And if you look at the Pharisee, he sees her problem and misses all of his problem on the judgment side. He, he got a lot for her. But right now you can see he ain't done nothing for Jesus. He hasn't even been welcoming to this woman who is doing something for Jesus. And understand that he's supposed to be doing something for Jesus. But the only ones that he can see are the ones that he judges. The woman and Jesus. Anybody want to read Matthew 7, um, 3 through 5? Matthew 7, uh, 3 to 5 says, And why behold thou 
the mold that is in thy brother's eye, but consider it not the being that is in thy own eye. Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mold out of thine eye, and behold, a being is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the being out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mold out of thy brother's eye. Uh oh. So here you go looking at somebody else and you got your own problems. You looking at the little thing and you missing the big thing about you. That's what he was doing. He was looking at her little problem. Jesus had that in control. He was looking at the fact that he didn't think Jesus had the ability, wasn't a prophet, didn't have the authority. But the whole time he was judging someone that he had no authority or ability to judge. And it was two people. He saw the woman's faults and then even commenced to judge Jesus and see his faults in him. That would have to be scary. Simon was even missing the simple fact that the woman did not live in his house who was doing the service for Jesus and was not invited by him but came to perform a service and provide for Jesus all that he did not. And this is when Jesus steps in and begins to speak. Then he turned toward the woman in 44 and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Uh-oh. Jesus speaks to him. He says, even the traditional things that a Jew does, you didn't do. And he's looking at the woman. He says, this woman, no. She did, but, but Simon, you offered no hospitality. And this may speak to the simple fact that he felt above kindness because of who Simon was and what he thought Christ was not. What the woman was and what... He thought she was not. See, the woman had followed the custom of kindness and civility, and Simon did not feel the need to do so. In all actuality, Simon had slighted Jesus, and I'm being nice by saying slighted, by not providing the customary things prior to the meal, or even a servant that does it. So the question then becomes, why did Simon truly want Jesus there? He did this intentionally, and that is probably what even bothered him more about the woman because she came with the intention of serving Jesus. She was planning to do for Jesus. He tried to take away what Jesus deserved. And the, and the Lord said, no, sir, no, sir, I have someone that will provide for him when you won't. See, Jesus did not need any water because the woman's tears were the water that Simon did not provide. He didn't need a cloth because the woman's hair was the cloth that Simon did not provide. And the extension of kindness was presented by the woman that Simon did not provide. So God still had a plan that Jesus would be treated properly and for this Pharisee to see. Because he viewing this. He ain't walking away from this. The people are seeing this. So in 45 it says, you did not give me a kiss. But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. Uh-oh. 
you still have not treated me in any way, even after watching how this woman has treated me in your house. You still didn't take any time to recognize me. So since you have wanted to judge, then let the true judge of all men speak. Simon, he says, you offered me nothing as I entered your house. There was no kiss from you, but the woman gave me one, and she has not stopped kissing my feet. You have offered me nothing. The woman was showing continuous respect and service to Jesus the whole time. Simon wouldn't even give him a little bit. Why didn't Simon want to give him any? I came in and you were here and no hospitality, but this woman came in after me. Uh-oh, here's a big shocker. The woman came in after Jesus. And she was the one that still had the continuous show of hospitality. See, if you, if you go back to verse 37, it tells you that a woman in that town who lived in a a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. Now you know what she was taking the jar for, what the perfume was for. It was to provide service to Jesus. It never tells you she went there asking for anything. It never says she had plans to call upon Jesus for nothing. This so-called woman that has a sinful life just went there because Jesus was there and she wanted to provide kindness to him. See, you have been here a longer time with more opportunity to take care of me and you did nothing. Nothing. You invited me as a guest to your house, but the uninvited guest treated me like this is her house. Or, or maybe she truly recognized, maybe her faith was on display and she understood who was in your house. While you were judging her, she was seeing who was truly here. And she knew what I truly deserved. But you got eyes of judgment. You have thoughts of doubt and you have wickedness in your heart. And you couldn't even give me what you would give customarily. And Jesus says it in 46. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. That's a Jewish tradition. And you didn't do it. This is what we do when we enter households. And, and this oil, you, you anoint it with, this oil on our head. You didn't even do that. There was nothing, Simon, that you did except judge. Anybody want to pull up Psalm 23 and 5? to be treated when they enter your house. See, you, you got this table ready, and this passage goes along with what's happening. 
This is a dinner. The table is prepared. Jesus got some enemies up in here. You anoint my head. You didn't even do that. Not with no oil. You didn't do anything. You did not even treat me like I was worth anything to you. And you did not show me the decency. You did not anoint my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. The woman did everything that you are to do when receiving a guest from the kiss to the anointing. But Simon, all I got from you was judgment in a bad mind. Ain't that the truth, Good Samaritan? Out of her love for Jesus, she was doing this. Nowhere in this passage do you read that the woman came asking for anything. Remember that her title adjective was sinful life. While this so-called man of God, this Pharisee, did not do for the Savior. Understand, your title means nothing to the Lord if your heart ain't right. So in 47 it says, therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven... Little loves little. See, Jesus forgave her of her sins. He even makes you realize now that he knows who the woman is that the Pharisee thought that he didn't. This Pharisee thought he didn't know because he says her many sins. How many sins did this Pharisee have that he thought Jesus may not know of? What about the guests that was there? How many sins did they have? See, the question is, why did he forgive him, her, of the sins? The answer is love. She had a great love for Jesus and came to him knowing her life and still loved the Lord beyond the one that was so called living a better life. So if she loved Christ like that, then it means that her faith was strong. Because she walked in there knowing who he was and knowing that she had to serve him. But the one that invited him to the house, I guess, just didn't know. Her forgiveness is the result of loving much. She showed and gave a great love to Jesus from her humbleness, her kindness, her offering of the perfume, how she presented it, and what she did and how she was set up to do it. This woman bowed down, got low, washed his feet, kissed them, and took care of him like she was in her own house. And she is the one with all the sin. See, God's forgiveness is measured in his love, and she was forgiven. She went there with intentions of loving on Jesus. And you saw that in verse 37. That was her intention with the jar. It was to love on Christ. Not one time have you read that she went to get something. And her intentions were easy to see. And it was simple. She loved Jesus and she had many sins. But the great love for Jesus outweighed her sins and her love brought her to the one that she would love on and serve with what she had. 
And Jesus saw that she had loved him much and forgave her for much. She had an intentional purpose to serve Jesus and she did not know what the outcome would be. She just came to serve him. But she knew that he was to be honored. And, and I did some of this verse backwards intentionally because who is Jesus talking to in the verse? He's talking to Simon. You know that dude that was doing all of the judging and didn't think Jesus was a prophet is now truly the one that is being judged. Jesus speaks to him and lets him know that he is the judge of all. And when he announces that the woman's sins are forgiven, there was nothing for Simon to say. The other thing is that he never said that Simon was forgiven. But he announced that she was. But you can ask yourself, where was Simon's love? And I can answer. It was in his pride and his arrogance. If you look at Proverbs 8 and 13, it says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Simon did not fear the Lord because his actions and thoughts told you that when he came in the door. And then his overwhelming arrogance to say that Jesus is not a prophet because of the woman's character. He should know. And his pride led him to judge the woman and Jesus. His evil behavior was in his heart and mind and the speech and his actions were perverse and unacceptable because of his thoughts. And even his actions spoke of how he truly felt. Jesus is showing Simon from forgiveness for the woman to knowing of her sins to socializing with this woman to letting her come to him and to letting her touch him that he loves all. Where man has his own boundary, Jesus came for everybody. There is no dark corner that he can't go to and shed light on it. There is nobody that is too far away for Jesus to reach. And Jesus didn't come here to judge at the time. Simon had a judgment call on himself to judge. But understand, anyone that touched Jesus has sinned. And everybody that comes to him is a sinner. And your life in man's eyes does not dictate your life in God's eyes. You may have much here, but Jesus is not looking at the material. If he was, Simon would be okay from the standards of this message. See, Jesus said his people are marked by love. And he looks at the heart in this so-called well-known sinner of a woman. She was marked by love towards Christ because she showed it. And her heart was right because her intentions from day one were to go to serve Jesus. She didn't ask for anything. Please read this over and over. The woman never asked for anything. So in verse 48, it says, Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Jesus tells her directly that what was spoke to Simon is true to you. Your sins are forgiven. 
Could you imagine how she must have felt? I, I didn't come in here asking for anything. I know who you are, Lord. I just came to serve you and to take care of you and to anoint you. But you have forgiven me. You knew what I needed before I came here. Do you think that she rejoiced? And more importantly, did you see her intentional action of love lead to more love? Especially when you do good works in the name of the Lord. She was showing love and Christ said, I'll do you one better. Simon wasn't planning to treat Jesus right and this lady knowingly said no matter where he is, and even in the man's house, I will treat Jesus correctly. And she did. Please understand also that this woman knew Jesus better than the Pharisee. Because she started out. She started out in the service mode, the service mindset. So she had faith. And although Simon couldn't see past her life in the community, Jesus saw her without judgment. Remember, Jesus also came to serve in love. And this woman came to serve in love. So in 49, it says the other guests began to say, among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? So the question comes up in which the woman knew the answer. The guest asked, who is this that forgives sins? See, they were still lost. Jesus said they're forgiven. She knew who he was. But they were still mm. Who is this who even forgives sins? See, now, now Simon's on display again because Jesus has all the power and authority and he forgave the woman. She had come to him and please recognize her coming to Jesus as an acknowledgement probably of her own transgressions or as we say, repentance. So she repented in her service. She was a willing servant and humble enough to wash Jesus' feet without even being asked. And she was aware of who he is and was. So her great love and faith in Christ was started with her willingness to go see him. And please understand that she never paid attention to the guest or to Simon because she was focused on Jesus. Go to him in confidence and be laser focused on him when you go to him. She went in love and got a gift of a greater love. So in 50 verse 50, Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. All the things that she did were based on her faith. She had faith in Christ. From the service to the love is because she had faith in whom she was going to see. And she knew that. How did Simon invite him to the house and miss it? She was not going to see what he could do for her. She was not judging him. She didn't say anything degrading because she knew who Jesus is and she came to see him in her faith. So it was her faith in him that saved her. And Jesus then tells her to go in peace. And, and understand, nobody wants to leave Jesus. Nobody wants to go away from Jesus. But now she could go in peace 
because Christ had told her to, but now she was a walking testimony. Now she could tell some people about how I went to Jesus in my faith and he forgave me of my sins. Now she could testify about the one who washes away her sins. She could tell them about her faith and how it saved her. And how the Lord especially didn't see her as man did. Because if it was up to Simon, she wasn't worthy. But to Jesus, to Jesus, the faith of this anointer and all her so-called sinful ways was worthy enough to be forgiven for all her sins. And we can't get that from man. We can only get that from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good Amen. Amen. Yeah, I had one, one. I had one good ass, and you took it too. <laughs> My fault, sir. <laughs> Stevens, you wanna you wanna pray us out? Amen. 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 Amen.
Y'all have a blessed evening. Love y'all. Love y'all.